Welcome to Inside the Thin Blue Line. Dave Radigan here with uh, Dale Lawrence, retired police officer, and Nathan Arroyo, actor, comedian. And Nathan, here's my question for you. Yeah. Have you ever had that day where you just didn't feel like you had a job? You went into the job, but you just didn't feel like doing the job? Yeah, it's every day. Okay. <laughs> and so, have you ever had a job where you just didn't do your job? You went in, you punched in. And you just didn't do your job somehow. Yeah, that's, that's again, every day. Every day, like what kind of a job? Huh? Any job that I've had. Every oh, job that you've had? Every job that I've had, yeah. Where you do you currently punch? work, Nate? Car wash? Car wash. Car wash. So uh-huh. people come in, they want their car wash, and you say, that's I, fine. I don't do it. You just, just say, what do you say? I tell them I'm going to clean the car, but then I don't. And then you don't. You don't <laughs> soap it up? You don't pretend? <laughs> I mean, I'll, 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 I'll spray... I'll just spray the water gun in the air just so they think, ah, oh, he must be doing something. But no, I'm just wasting water. Okay. Uh, I bring this up because a New Orleans 911 operator is being sought by police because she apparently didn't feel like doing her job. And she was, uh, the, the, the allegation is that she was deliberately disconnecting calls. Yeah. What can go wrong there? (laughs) (laughs) So this was from the September 2 Fox News flash. Um, New Orleans police are looking for a 911 operator accused of deliberately hanging up during emergency calls who has since been fired. So she's been fired, but now they're looking for her. Um, She's on the run, baby, in New Orleans. (laughs) The charges of uh, malfeasance in office and interfering with an emergency communication. Who would think that would be... It happens. That, that's but, that's, but, that's very, it's not common, but it's not uncommon in, in law enforcement when you're talking about 911 communication centers. It happens. People, a lot of times people are accidentally hung up on, like by accident, you press the wrong button. Cause there's a lot accidentally of on purpose? Well, no, well, she was obviously on purpose. Her name is Precious, Precious Stevens. Yeah, I wasn't. Oh, gonna, I'm sure her mom's gonna, proud. I wasn't going to name her. <laughs> oh, I wasn't yeah. going to name her because I know she's important to somebody. Yeah. Whoever we'll named her Precious Apparently, this is the this it, it, this is what it appears to me. All right, they did an investigation into a random set of calls on her shifts on uh, August twenty and twenty one. This was confirmed by NOLA dot com, uh, New Orleans. What's it? New Orleans. Is a, 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 what's a, what, what's NOLA? I think it's just New Orleans. I don't know what the hell it is. Okay. We could probably look it up on yeah. one of our phones, but if, if we weren't so lazy, yeah. I would have probably done it already. Nathan would do it, but he doesn't like to do his job anyway. No, no he said he's 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 told me many times he's looking things up, and then he's I see later on it's just it's just more porn. <laughs> uh, anyway, so. This is uh this is a really interesting thing. I mean, that's the one thing I think we all trust. I think we all trust is that if we call nine one one, if we're in this kind of a of a bind, or we want to report a crime, or we want to report a car disabled on the side God of the road, God forbid you're choking on a hunk of steak, Dave. That's a good point. Yeah. I would not call nine one one if that was the case. I would just Heimlich myself uh, because you know why. Why? Because how are you going to talk to somebody if you're going to bring a hunk of steak in well, you? Hopefully, hopefully you have someone at home that's going to be looking out for you, did Dave. You, did you ever have anybody call you and say, oh, ha, 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 ha. People, you know, we've, had, we've had that, but it's, usually, it's called a 911 hang up when someone calls and they hang up or they don't say anything to you. Yeah. And then you're going to send someone anyway. To do the Heimlich. Well, to go to the call and, and see what's happening because you had, there was no contact. So basically somebody calls up and they say, have you ever hung up on anybody? Absolutely, I have. <laughs> I have. Okay. Why would you- uh, more often, it was accidentally. You just pressed the wrong button. But we have we usually have their address locked into the computer. Yep. So you can send someone or you can call back because the phone number is going to be locked in 99 times out of 100. But have I, have I been pissed off and someone's just been rambling and berating 911 operator? Absolutely, I have. But we still send someone there. Okay. You get, you get the gist of their Do- complaint. And you get the location and the callback number, and you send someone. How many How many years did you work 911? Well, at, at the, least the in my street. community or in the local communities on the North Shore of Massachusetts, every police officer is 911 trained. So okay. your whole career, 20, 30, 15 years, however long you've been on, at some point you work in the dispatch center as a 911 operator. How many calls that come in out of every 10 calls or every 100 calls, how many calls are crank calls. 
You have Hold nowadays. On, me... You nowadays with with the Apple phones, and if you sit on your phone and you sit on yeah. a button for five seconds or more, it's going to automatically call. So if you get thirty calls a shift, I bet you get about ten that are just accidental calls. Accidental. It's accidental. Accident. Oh, because you need to call four one one and you hit nine. Well, well, no, you just you just sit on your phone. The the new I mean, you the sit iPhone on your phone. The iPhone. If you press your iPhone, one of the yep. buttons, accidentally. And it's going to, for more than five seconds, usually, it'll automatically call 911. That's kind of an emergency thing. What about the good old days of prank phone calls? Does that exist anymore? Nathan, how many times have you, did you, do you, Uh, have you done this? Prank phone calls don't exist. Uh, It's gone from uh, calling someone to ask if their refrigerator is running to catfishing grown men and pushing them to suicide. That's the new prank call. (laughs) (laughs) Have you done that? Oh, Not yet. so many. I've killed so many. Men. <laughs> I'm Susie from Ohio. I'm 16. I'm going to show everyone a picture of your dick if you don't give me $5,000 right now. And then, you know, they'll blow, blow their brains out. <laughs> wow. wow. And, and, then, and then you move on to the next one. There you, there you go. go. <laughs> and the, clearly those, those victims have no pride in their parents. So let's co- talk about some nine one one calls. Oh, we got some great ones, baby. Yeah, we got some great ones. The first, the first one, and, I, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna play it in a minute. Is a young lady by the name of Susie Yum Yum. She was an Asian girl from the Lowell area in Massachusetts. Su- what's what's put? Yeah, what, what's Susie that? Yum Yum? Yes, uh, that's a, that's the name I just gave her. Okay, all right. Lowell, Mass. Yeah. Come on, you're an ex sports writer. Who's from Lowell, Mass? Huh? Mickey Wood. There you go. He has nothing to do with this. I'm He's just asking if you, knew, if you knew who was, <laughs> it was the just Lowell random, Mass. Random trivia. But this is a call that we actually got at the location that I work. And she's and a, she's a, oh, this was in in, uh, in your town. In my, you might even recognize the caller, the uh, call taker on the uh, on it. So stand by. We're going to play that. 911, the sign's recorded. What's your emergency? Yo, some guy picked me up. He asked me for some blow. I gave it to him, and I said, "Give me my money." And he said, "Get the fuck out!" <laughs> wow, wow. Well, name calling too. Yeah, you Not know, enough but- to steal from her, but then to name call as an experienced street cop, Dave. Yeah, my first thing was she came here as as from Lowell, Massachusetts. She was a young Asian girl. Well, she was when I say young, she was at least eighteen and nineteen, and she was at one of our how local. Do you, how do you know she was eighteen and nineteen? Because we went down to the call. Oh, you did go down to the uh, call. not me personally, but we sent someone to the call. Okay, and she was around eighteen and nineteen, and it, I guess um, it was her first time in the um, in that type of business because she came. First of all, she came without a pimp. Yeah, rule of thumb, Dave. Where there's a prostitute, there's a pimp. Very close by. Really? Because that's how they collect the money. Yeah. Because this so, young girl so was, she was he, ripped does off. He, does he surveil? He just kind of drops the young lady off and she'll go into a house or an apartment or at this location, it happened to be like the woods and a beach. The uh, woods and a beach? Yeah, the, you know, the wooded area of a beach area. A wooded a area and a beach? Yeah. Well, you know. In the, in the, in the, in the, uh, in the brush line, Dave. In the brush line? Yeah, when no one could see what the was things, going on. Did things happen in the brush line? Yeah, and, and she provided some oral services and she wasn't paid so she called us that and seems... she expected us to get the money for her yeah, that's the problem that's why you got to get things in writing you well yeah I, 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 it's kind of funny you, you bring that up because i was gonna if she's listening Susie yum yum if you're listening i have a few taglines you might want to put on your page and the first one is if you're looking for a blow venmo just get some venmo and the second one is for a blow venmo that's a good point. Yeah. All she has to do is get Venmo. I don't know. <laughs> Venmo, it seems like the IRS would be able to track it. Oh, track it, yeah. You know, if you're going to be, I mean, uh, all right. That's yeah, we one. basically just sent her on her way. We told her, hey, you know, up in Lowell, you can probably get away with that. Places like Lowell, Lynn, Boston, they have what's referred to as an open air. They have an open air drug market, meaning drugs are randomly peddled on the street. You'll have prostitutes walking up and down certain streets in those neighborhoods but in most communities on the north shore and the south shore of massachusetts you really don't have open air 
prostitution markets. I mean, you don't have girls walking the streets. Where, where were the towns that they they allow it to happen? Uh, Lynn would be common. Worcester would be common. Boston, well, Lowell, would do, Lawrence, Lynn, places Lynn, like that. Lynn would do the periodic crackdown. Oh, yeah. Come on. We used to have a thing that happened. <laughs> this happened in journalism when I was at a paper called North Shore Sunday. Every couple of years, we would have a new reporter and the new reporter would come in all excited and uh, announce to us that there was prostitution going on in Lynn. Oh, there you and go. She, and, and it was a hot story, and he or she was going to do it. And they'd always be very, very excited about uh, about this that this discovery that they had made. I, I, know this, I know this happened in Lynn a couple of years ago, maybe five or six years ago. They had the... Uh, you know, Essex County task force out there doing the prostitution surveillance. And I guess they pinched a, uh, a local police officer. I don't know where he was from, but I do recall there was a local police officer who was caught up in the sting. Oh, so yeah. You know. How does, a, how does, this is a good question. How do cops wind up getting, I assume there's got to be alcohol involved. Yeah. It, it could have been some alcohol issues with him. And then he just, you know, made his way to Lynn and saw some young girl in the corner and propositioned her. And she just happened to be, you know, an undercover detective but from would, another agency. But you would think that a, you would think that a cop would recognize. Well, you would think yeah. that he might be aware of the area and see a couple of people sitting in cars kind of looking or maybe filming the area. But again, not if he's. If he's, if, he's, you know, if he's got a drug or alcohol, if he's got a buzz on, he's down there just looking for something quick, you know? Oh, well, what can you do, Dave? You know what I mean? <laughs> we got, we got another, oh, we got another one coming up, too. All right. This, this, is, this is right in Nathan's wheelhouse. 911, this line's recorded. What's your emergency? Okay, okay. Stop, 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 stop. Okay, okay, okay. I was, I was, I was assaulted. I was offended. I was insulted. Okay. My neighbor, he's a prick. Okay. I gave him a little favor. I gave him a blowy. All right, sir. Just calm calm down. No, fuck you. You calm down. Fuck you. Oh, that was a a great one. That's got to be fake. That's got to be fake. His neighbor, conveniently, um... That's got to be fake. No, absolutely not. You want to know why? Because it happened in the community that I work. Uh, it happened in a local boarding house or a rooming house. I actually went to the call. Okay. <laughs> Myself All right. and my partner. A few years ago, we went to the call. I actually know the individual involved. He's a kid that I the, went to. The one that paid the debt or the one that provided the service? The one that oh, called on that, that, that 911 okay. call right he there. Pro- he provided the service. He provided the service and he didn't get his payback. Expecting that it would be a, a trade. Yeah, you know, fair fair barter, right? Yeah. I, I scratch your back, so to speak, <laughs> and you scratch mine. Yeah, so we went there and um, we knew what we were getting into because the backstory on this on this kid or this individual, he's, you know, he's in, in his 40s, he actually spent eight years in prison for attempted murder of an older lover probably 30 years ago. He stabbed the guy. Imagine what that guy didn't do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so with that being said, you know, we're laughing at the call, and, and he's definitely irate, and he's highly feminine. So you're probably thinking, wow, he really can't do much damage. But when we got there, he had a tank top on, a uh, pair of underwear, and he was excited to see us. <laughs> <laughs> and he was, he was drunk, he was drugged out, and the, the story goes is he went to his roommate's guy next door and they you know were drinking and smoking together and he provided oral sex on the guy Mm -hmm. and he wanted his payback like he said and the guy told him to screw so they got into a little scuffle he went back to his apartment and we showed up it's terrible when you don't have the car when you again nathan when you don't have the agreement in writing signed and notarized (laughs) you can see what can happen yeah, so we, we were able to de-escalate that situation. And how did you de-escalate that situation? Uh, we, we just kind of we kind of I wouldn't say threatened, but told both of them that we were going to arrest both of them just to make it as simple as that. Oh, don't threaten them with a good time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the old cavity what, search back at the station. Well, I, I love the idea that you 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 receive a service like this from your neighbor, as you say, and. Um, and then you find out that he did time in prison for murdering a former lover. Well, he didn't murder. He, he attempted murder. Attempted. He stabbed. He oh, did eight, okay. eight years attempted. in prison. He did eight attempted. years in prison. He did eight years in prison. Walpole, Walpole prison. Not like, you know, a little yeah. 
Not a farm. He wasn't on a farm.